Hello community, so great that you are back. Today we talk about drag in multi-agent system. And you might ask, hey, how do we build a team of ER agents that are just perfectly coordinated? Now, you know, now we move from prompt engineering away now to a cognitive architecture of multi-ER agents, and they will have a social, quotation mark, dynamics. The machine will have a social dynamics. So we move now from an LLM whisperer to an AI society architect with multi-agent structures. Now, easy. What is our task today? We have a brand new paper. It's gorgeous. The best day paper of today. Solution two, we have here, if you want here, a benchmark. And look, those are the LLMs that you know. Kimi, DeepSeek Op1, QN, Gemini, Chlor, GPT-5, Grok4. And the performance, the accuracy is the best one is Grok4. 30%. This is it. How can we go to 50? This is what we're going to talk about today. So let's start. Here, HLE, if you're not familiar, humanities last exam. It's a little bit on the scientific side, biology, chemistry problems, no? And you see our current LLM here, the performance degrades substantially. If you go a little bit more complicated, and now we combine this that we say, hey, we need external data from a deep domain knowledge. Of course, this is our REC system. And we will have to integrate REC into a complex multi-step reasoning done by multiple agents at different times and different complexity levels. So you might say, hey, finally, AI is getting interesting. Absolutely. So two fundamental architectural limitations we're going to talk about and their solutions. So we do have a fragmentation of the logical flow of the reasoning traces of our GPT-5 through explicit tool invocation, whenever we have to call rack or no, retrieval, augment more or less, just to get new external data, the reasoning process is interrupted. Plus, we see that there is an inefficiency if we have a democratic multi-agent collaboration where you have majority vote. So how can we cope with those problems? And I will show you that we have two error types. We have an error type one, simply that our LLM is overconfident. There's no rack at all. Just the LLM goes to its parametric knowledge and says, hey, yeah, I know for this particular formula, this is the mathematical expression. Turns out it was a pure hallucination. No, no it is something else. But why do you need a rack system? No, the LLM knows it, quotation mark. No, it hallucinates it. And the error type type 2 is much more interesting. It's a rack calling that disrupted here the reasoning traces of the LLM. So... It's like a human, you know? you're thinking about something, you say, hey, I need more information. So you go have a deep dive, maybe you Google, you come back with the solution and you say, hey, where was I in my reasoning process? How do I integrate this new result now, this new data, this new knowledge into my old reasoning traces? And how do I modify now the reasoning traces? And we can show LLMs have the same problem. Of course, they mimic human behavior. We have an error type 2 with red calling disrupting the reasoning. So let's solve this. Now, if you take a step back and you look at the multi-agent collaboration, you say, you know what? We have two separate problems. We do have, again, a structural complexity topic that we solve now in an architectural hyperplane. And we have a problem here co regarding here the communication complexity. So the amount of information and time and everything that we share between our multi-agents, the information exchange itself, the amount, the details, when, at what time frame we have to do this, what information to provide to which LLM and which agent is taking here a decision. Do we have a majority voting system on this? So, my goodness, it's again complexity, and you guessed it, what is the solution? Yes, of course, we integrate this with REG, because otherwise, hey, this would be a boring video, so let's have some fun. What is the solution? We have a new paper, and it's called Eigen1. Eigen1 is like eigenvalue or eigenfunction. Eigen1 is a beautiful idea, and it pushes here exactly what I showed you here, our benchmark close to 50%, 48.3. Okay. So you see our GPT-5 in itself has a per, uh, performance accuracy of 22.8%. And even if you have now an OpenAI deep research here, done by the old O4 Mini, for example, you also achieved here for this particular benchmark here, humanity's last exam, 22.8%. But we want to go to 50. So how we do this? We do this with Eigen 1. 
So it is a new framework, and this is it. Listen, it just has three components. It's simple as hell. It just has here the retrieval augment. It's not direct. It's a retrieval augmented process uh, framework that is continuously monitoring the tokens. So you have a monitor-based rack system that goes here, and I will show you this in an example, and I will show you this in detail. No problem here. Operating continuously at the token level to detect knowledge gaps via semantic uncertainty. It will then generate immediate queries for the rack system and will inject the retrieved information seamlessly into the reasoning process. We will have another element. This is a hierarchical solution refinement, something beautiful, because now with this information, the system now generates multiple solution. And now with this idea, we take now, let's say, 10 solutions, and we take one candidate solution as an anchor, and then we have nine other solutions that we cross-check against, and we do this here iteratively. So we squeeze out every piece of information that we have in those 10 solutions, and we compare it and we generate a hierarchical solution refinement process. And finally, we have an iterative reasoning process also with multiple agents. So it's full of agents here in our video. Let's say I have here a look. So we start. The first is the monitor based rack. So retrieval augmentative checks here continuously. It monitors here continuously the reasoning at the fixed interval of 512 characters within the read next token generation, reasoning trace generation, 512 characters with an overlap of 128 characters. It doesn't miss anything here at the border. Great. So you have a problem, then you go and you see in the reasoning trace of your LLM of a GPT-5, or no, maybe an open source that you really see the reasoning trace, and your AI tells you, hey, I know little about this pi parameter, and this is detected immediately by the monitor-based rack system. It says, okay, so we need to provide additional information. We don't wait another 500 characters in the reasoning trace. No, immediately we have a query that goes to a rack system, to a database, no SQL, whatever you have. You have additional information. You have an injector. You project it back. You remember here we have multimodality can possibility. You project it back here and suddenly you have additional context. So context optimization. Now, but look at it. You see what we are doing? Take a step back and look at this. This is here a structure that you are familiar with. No? Why we do this? By ensuring that the queries here that we send off are as fine-grained as possible, as minimal, as, as simple as possible, the query, our agent here, avoids unnecessary expansion of the search space. Immediately we say, hey, I don't understand a single term. So I immediately go and I check what is this term. Give an explanation. I don't want that my search space expands to higher dimensions. I want to have it minimum and it immediately responds. Therefore, maximizing here the relevance of the retrieved evidence. So a complete new rank system here that operates here within 512 characters of the reasoning trace. But you know what we do? This is also a complexity, no? 512 characters are a reasoning complexity. And we reduce this complexity of an uncertainty that we are not familiar with in REC into its smallest elements, as fine-grained as possible, and those smallest elements we query. So the, comp the intelligence of the system is not that the system has a complex intelligence. No, it's the complete opposite. What we do is we go to a complexity, we chop it in pieces, hundreds of pieces, and then we just solve each single little piece of those 100 pieces. And then hopefully, hopefully, we can put it together in a coherent solution back. But therefore, we have here the second part. So just wait a second. So injector here, sorry, injector coming back with the rag results, filters and compresses here the raw rag outputs into a concise Utility focus snippet, yes, of course, we have here another agent and you know exactly what's great. So if you want, we have a dip provided additional context now. No? And Jack the here has the original context and the reg results, and you're familiar with this. Great. If you want to see this, remember here with the injector, you can have problems too. 
If you want to see an example, let's have a look. This is here the human question. This is here from our benchmark here, one query. So LLM begins reasoning. It says, okay, I have here two input strands, so yeah, whatever. And then you see the monitor comes and say, detected an uncertainty in the reasoning trace. And recombination induced change points. No? And the query says, oh, I immediately define a query. I generate here and extract keywords, key phrases. I formulate from those a query and I immediately query here, hey, how many upload type or recombination change points, whatever. I get a knowledge back from the retriever and then the injector brings it back here, this additional information. Everything that we know, no problem at all. But now that we have this information, now starts the real work. Ne? Because now we have an augmented query, if you want, and now we have multiple agents operating here. Ne? We have a proposer that generates now, with this additional context, initial solution. So let's say 10 different solutions. You know, we are in probability systems, so who knows what's the right solution. Then we have a corrector. Corrector checks here one by one. And then comes the beautiful thing here of a refinement. This refinement is here our second step. You remember our hierarchical solution refinement. This is special. So for each of those, let's say, 10 solutions, we apply now our repair strategy for the logic completion, for the numerical corrections, for the methodology replacement, or for an expression refinement for technical terms. So we do have selected one of the first of the 10 uh, elements here. We have one anchor and nine, if you want, solutions. And now we just cross-check, cross-reference. And here it depends, of course, of the LLM. How intelligent are you? So this is a lot of fun. If you want to see it here in text, what we have is a peer-informed repair mechanism. This is here HSR. Challenges the assumption that all the solution, let's say 10 here, should contribute equally to the final output. It is not that every solution has the same beauty or the same intelligence. No? And a vote of AI system is maybe not the best way to do this. No? So therefore, structured relationship, mirror expert collaboration patterns, and peer-informed repair structure. And then we go on here to the quality aware iterative reasoning process. And here we have another LLM based evaluator, another agent. And here we define the team here defines three quality dimensions logic, answer, and explanation, plus a suggestion for improvement. And we have a specific uh, threshold here for multiple dimensions. If you cross this threshold here, or the answer crosses here the threshold, you have a go. Select the best solution, you have a ranker, a re-ranker, you, you know from the classical ranks, rack systems, and you have a final answer. So you see, simple, familiar, but the complexity of agent, 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 and agent interacting and having given here a particular task on a very low complexity, it tells you, oh, we have to reduce the complexity to the maximum, otherwise it would not work. But given this new architecture that we design here of the multi-agent cooperation, we get a result that is just great. Let's have a look at this. This is the study. Eigen one adaptive multi-agent refinement with monitor-based rack for scientific reasoning. Yale University, Shanghai Chengdong University, Fudan University, University of California, LA, Shanghai AI Lab, University of Oxford and Eigen AI. And published September 25, 2025. So nice. If you want to see the complete example here, if you have done the step two with LLM, resumes here the reasoning, goes here for the coding, goes then for the extraction here of the coding results and the final summary. Beautiful. I record this video just nine hours after this was published. And as you can see on GitHub, <laughs> they say more details will come soon. So whenever you will see this video, maybe tomorrow, I hope you already have here the code for the GitHub repo. So let's look at the result again. This is here numerical. And you know the first benchmark, I just showed it this at the very beginning of the video. A GPT-5 gets 22%. This is not famous. Yeah? And other agentic systems that we have go up to 34%. So, okay, there's a significant jump if you have multi-agents. But look at this. If you go with Eigen and you go with an open source, a DeepSeek version 3.1, at a posit 1, you are close to the 50% that we want. And if you go with a posit 5, 
we go over 60% performance. This is really nice. And you have here other benchmarks that you can compare. And you say, okay, a jump from 22 to 50 or 60% accuracy for a multi-agent system. It seems to be working. Now, they give you here, and this is now a screenshot from the Annex here, they give you exactly how the RAG database, how it was constructed, the 10,000 PDF papers in biology and chemistry, extracted here to PDF, plain text and everything, and then the positive and negative keywords and everything, plus they give you the complete prompt. So for the RAG bullet point summarization, real nice, and they also give you here for the RAG injector, they also, it's not in the GitHub, at least in the annex of the publication, you have here the complete prompts. But you know what's really interesting? We take a step back and we look here at the complete study, the insights. It provides here eigen one a macro architecture of an efficient and effective agent collaboration system. No? And it's two subsystem create here a formal protocol, if you want, how agents should interact and should re-rank and should operate to refine solutions here, scientific solution, and converge faster onto truth. And what I've not told you here, they argue that they use less token than the other multi-agent system here that are competitive because since they are monitoring continuously, they immediately identify any missing knowledge, you know, the knowledge gap or any misunderstanding of a technical term and they don't go somewhere else, explode into or going into loops. Say so they're much more efficient, which is great. But of course, this is just the first part of the story, because in my next video, we're going to have a deep dive into the microdynamics now that govern especially those interactions between our multi-agent system that we just looked at. And this will be a video that complements this now from a macrodynamical perspective. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe. I see you in my next video.